Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Be Ye Holy Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, it is a blessing and a joy to be back with you. It has been some time since we've been together, and I apologize. There have been some distractions on my end, but we're here today to rejoice in the great things of the God that we serve and to expound and study his word together. And I trust that you have been bathing in the word of God, that you have been shielding yourself from so many falsehoods that are being thrown around today, that are being thrown at us today. For instance, Joel Osteen says, your best life now. Jesus says, in this life, you will suffer. And as we've been studying the book of James, and we're going to continue that today, in James chapter 1, it says, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations into divinely sent trials, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. And if you'll let patience have her perfect work so that you can be perfect and entire wanting nothing, you will be transformed slowly day by day, moment by moment into the very person of the Lord Jesus himself. And that's the sanctifying process that God is working in us and through us, producing in us the character of his son, Jesus. And what this tells us is that in this life, we are to rejoice in tribulation, meaning we are to invite tribulation because it is through the suffering that we endure in this world, just as Jesus, our master and our king suffered and endured, that we're shaped and formed into the image of God. So opposite of what Joel Osteen says, your best life now, Jesus says, if you want to be like me, and you should, then you're going to suffer much in this life. And so your best life isn't now, your best life is to come. But in this life, you're preparing yourself to meet the Lord Jesus, unashamedly, confidently, boldly, knowing that you have done all in your power to serve him faithfully each and every day. So I trust that you've been shielding yourself by the word of God so that you can keep yourself from the many falsehoods and lies that are becoming more prominent in the day and age in which we live. Remember, the Bible says even the very elect, the most studious, will be deceived. Why? Because they're not shielded in the word of God. They're not protecting themselves, surrounding themselves, bathing themselves in the word of God. We as his people should be so knowledgeable about his word that when the lie is thrown at us, we immediately detect it and know that we've been lied to, that we're being tricked, that we're being deceived. And although the person saying it may seem glamorous, may be popular, and may even be famous, we see behind their face the tongue of the devil, of Satan himself, telling us what we want to hear rather than what we need to hear. Well, with that being said, we're continuing our study in the book of James, and today we find ourselves in James chapter 4, and we're going to pick up at verse 13. Now, we're going to read from 13 to 17, and we're going to read it from the King James Version. But then as I've been known to do, I'm going to read the same passage from the Message Bible so that you can get a distinct impression of what this is trying to tell us. Now, in verse 13 of chapter 4 of James, we are told, Go to now, you that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city. And we will continue there a year, and we will buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. 
For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. For that, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now, before we break this passage down and look a little deeper, let me, as I stated, read that same passage from the Message Bible, James chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 17. And now I have a word for you who brashly announce, today, at the latest, tomorrow, we're off to such and such a city for the year. We're going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You're nothing but a wisp of fog, catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it, and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. As it is, you are full of your grandiose selves. All such vaunting self-importance is evil. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, that for you is evil. Now, this should bring to mind the words of Jesus. When Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. Do you recall that? Turn to Matthew chapter 6 and let's begin at verse 31. Jesus says, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. What things? The things that you eat, the things that you drink, and the clothing that you need. All these things, the Father knows you need them. But instead, seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, his holiness, his godliness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Now, they may not be the finest of these things, but God never said that he would give us the finest to eat, the best to drink, the most fashionable clothing. He simply said he would provide our needs, not our wants. And so Jesus closes chapter 6 in verse 34 by saying, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now back to James chapter 4 in verse 13. James, remembering that this is Jesus' brother, James says, Go to now. Stop what you're doing. Those of you who say tomorrow or today we will go into such and such a city, we will continue there a year, buy and sell and get gain. In other words, you're planning your own life. James is telling us not to do that. James is saying, make it a habit to say, if it be the Lord's will, I'll do this or that. Because God is the one in control, not us. Man wants to think he's in control. Man wants to think he has some control over his future, over his choices. But the Bible tells us here very clearly that God is in control. He is the one guiding each and every step of our way. The Bible tells us that the steps of a righteous man are ordained by the Lord. Each and every step he foreknows, He's guiding you into where he would have you to go, into what he would have you to be. And so we're simply to rest and allow him to be God and to trust him regardless of where he leads us. It may not always be a mountaintop experience. Sometimes it may be a valley experience. Sometimes it may be a dark cave experience, but he's always there with us and he's always leading and guiding us, protecting us, shielding us, covering us. Well, in verse 14, it continues and says, whereas 
You know not what shall be on the morrow. You don't know the future. You don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. But God does the God that you serve, the one you call master. He knows, so simply trust in him. For what is your life? It's even a vapor, a puff of smoke that appears for a little time and then is gone. What you ought to say is if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. You are the king of your life is what James is saying. You have it surrendered fully and you're not allowing God to be in control. You're in control of your life. You're doing what you want to do, when you want to do, and how you want to do it. But you shouldn't rejoice in this, thinking too highly of yourself. For this kind of rejoicing is evil. It comes from the evil one. It comes from Satan. And if you're a true follower of Jesus, says James, you would know this because you know the teachings of the master. And you'll remember that Jesus said, as we read a while ago, take no thought for tomorrow. Be focused upon the issues of life today, for tomorrow will take care of itself when it arrives, because God is in control. And so if you know this, and you should because you call him Lord and Master, and you do not do what he says, this is sin. Why? Because of 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Let's look at that together. 1 John chapter 3. And verse 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. But now look at verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. And what are his commandments, one might ask? Well, look at chapter 3 of 1 John. In verse 4, it says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses against the law of God or against the commandments of God. For sin, by its very definition, is the transgression of the law. It's breaking the commandments of God. And so James says in verse 17 of chapter 4, To the one who knows to do good what the Lord Jesus has commanded of us, and yet does it not, to him this is sin. Why? Because Jesus has commanded it, and if he commanded it, and we are surrendered to him as our king, then we're going to obey what he has commanded us. And this isn't going to be burdensome. It's going to be joyful. It's going to bring us great delight that we have the opportunity to obey what he has commanded, to prove our love, to prove our allegiance by the service that we offer. And that's what James is telling us here. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And the next time we're together in the book of James, we'll pick up at verse 1 of chapter 5, and this is a passage that really doesn't need a lot of expounding, a lot of commentary, because it speaks for itself. It's so strong in the message that it presents that it needs very little input from an outside source. But we will take a closer look at it and see how it applies to us as the followers of the Lord Jesus. Well, with that, I trust that your day will be blessed. I trust that you will be drawn closer to the person of Jesus, that you will walk continually in his spirit, and that you will bring him great joy in the life that you live and the way that you live it while you're here in this short time upon this earth. Now, as the Lord Jesus wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.